Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video I'd like to discuss and answer a comment about using both Symbicort and Ventolin or Symbicort alone for treating asthma. And this is a really important comment and I'll show you why in a second. So let me just read it first. It comes from Tasha De Vries. Hi, I've taken both Ventolin and Becotide. I'll tell you what this is in a second. Since I was six years old, I recently landed, ended up in hospital with really bad viral pneumonia. The doctor there gave me Symbicort for six months to test out. Do I still use my Ventolin inhaler at the same time? as the Symbicort inhaler. So this is a great comment for a number of reasons because it, first of all, because it helps me outline how treatment for asthma is generally conducted. Now, obviously I'm not your doctor, so in your case it may not apply. So always check everything that I'm saying, everything you read online with your own healthcare providers. This is really important to get personalized advice in your case. But that being said, let me just um, outline a little bit how asthma treatment is generally conducted. So you have two main components, and this is really, really important to understand if you're suffering with asthma. On the one hand, you have maintenance or controller therapy. On the other hand, you have reliever therapy. So these two work together. Maintenance or controller therapy is there to prevent asthma attacks, and that's actually the treatment for asthma. You take it regularly in the form of an inhaler, which contains inhaled corticosteroids. Now, these are anti-inflammatory medications that you inhale and they reduce the inflammation of the inner lining of the airway. That's what prevents the actual asthma attacks from happening. Now, inhaled corticosteroids can be contained in becotide, like in the case of this comment, uh, which is basically one inhaler that contains only inhaled corticosteroids, or they can be part of a combination inhaler, such as Symbicort, such as Foster, Ceratide, many others. They contain inhaled corticosteroids. When you inhale this maintenance therapy, usually once or twice a day, depending on how it's prescribed to you, it controls the inflammation in the airways in the long run. So that's really, really important. It prevents asthma attacks. Now, despite being on maintenance therapy, which is great, you may sometimes get a flare-up of your asthma. You may get an exacerbation, and this can be linked sometimes to viral infections. Such was the case in this comment. A bad infection leading to a hospitalization, the asthma really got worse. So in those situations, you will need a reliever inhaler. This cuts the asthma attacks, it relieves your symptoms, you feel better. So in a sense, it would be logical to have both a reliever medication and an inhaler that controls the asthma. However, some of the combination inhalers that I mentioned, such as Symbicort and Foster, they contain two medications inside. So one of them is this inhaled corticosteroid, which con controls the asthma, but at the same time, it has a bronchodilator or a medication that relieves the breathlessness, opens up the airways, and that is fast acting in the case of those two inhalers, such as Symbicort or Foster. So in that situation, if you take your maintenance inhaler that contains the two, you will actually get symptomatic relief. You will feel better when you take it. In addition to getting an extra shot of that inhaled corticosteroid, which may actually reduce the inflammation even further and prevent future attacks. So it's actually a good way of treating asthma with just a single inhaler, if we're talking about Symbicort or Foster. So in that situation, that strategy is called SMART. Well, the acronym is Single Maintenance and Reliever Therapy. So basically you're using the same inhaler regularly to control the asthma, but if you do get an asthma attack, you do get a flare up, you take an extra puff. And that usually relieves your symptoms and you, know, you, you feel better and you prevent further attacks. However, that being said, I need to push back on that a little bit as well. Ventolin, or these sort of salbutamol blue inhalers that you are used as relievers that everyone knows, they still have a place. So if you are an asthmatic, I th still think you probably need that Ventolin inhaler around the house. The reason for that is because sometimes you may get actually really bad asthma attacks. And in that situation, just taking an extra shot of your regular inhaler may not be enough. The Ventolin allows you to take a lot of puffs if you need them in an asthma attack. It also connects to a spacer device. So if you are struggling with a really bad asthma attacks, you may find it really difficult to take your inhaler in that st stage. And you may not be able to take the medication that actually is needed to cut the asthma attack. So using a spacer with the Ventolin, you puff inside the spacer. I have some videos on how to use these on my channel. And then you take the puff slowly as you're breathing in. It still gives you some relief. So the Ventolin, having one around the house is probably a good idea. But in any case, regardless of the therapy that was prescribed to you, the most important thing is that you use good inhaler technique. I have some videos on my channel on how to use inhalers. Look them up. or check with your physician. 
take the inhaler with you to your consultations. Take a puff when you're visiting your doctor or your nurse to make sure that you get direct feedback on whether you are doing it correctly, because if you're not using it well, you will not get the same benefit. So I hope this explanation was helpful. If you have further questions, there are no silly questions, put them in the comment section below, and I'll see you in future videos. All the best and good health.